what's going on? It might be a little early, but I don't give a shit because uh, I need to get this done because, you know, you need to be the first one out to market so that everybody watches your shit and not the other ones. You like this hat, by the way? Pretty sweet, right? The Showdown Hoedown for my show. The Showdown Hoedown. What's up, new guy? I'm the Degenerate 75. I'm a high limit DFS player who is here to help you get better at PGA DFS because if you don't know, this shit be hard. But the one place you can find a little bit of an edge is at Showdown. And that's what we're going to be breaking down on the Showdown Hoedown. If you can't tell, oh shit, my editor inverted my shit. Hold on. See up here? Now I got to start using my right hand to do everything. Forgive me. He, he fucking inverted so my hat wouldn't be backwards. Showdown Hoedown. Every Friday and Saturday night. Although this is a weird one, right? Because like we don't even have a cut yet. They're still going to play another round. So this is a weird round three. If you don't know, be here every Friday night. Be here every Saturday night for round four. Because that's where the biggest edge is. Because people are fucking stupid and chase uh, you know, fake, fake, uh, fake imaginary placement points. But also, make sure to be here for the for the live stream every Wednesday 7 p.m. Lord's time zone which is central you slap dick know this stuff and uh, be here check it out that's for a week long if you don't know that's what we do I'm independent as fuck I don't give a shit what you think I'm here to help you get better if you don't like it click the fuck off I don't care <laughs> notice no ads on this video I clearly don't care about money all right, let's get going. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about my favorite site out there. It's called Cut Sweats, right? If you don't know, use my code right there. DGEN75 gets you half off the first month. If you're running a bunch of lineups, this week I decided to go a lot heavier on Showdown, so I didn't do as much week long. You can see I did 18 lineups, and what I did is I tossed them all in the big 18 uh, max $10 because, you know, that is kind of my baby. And then I went and tossed in some other ones, the $100 single entry, a couple in the pitch and putt, uh, just in some different some some fantasy golf world championship lineups. And you can see right now, as of right now, which is too early to tell because we got a full round tomorrow. And I think that the uh, Pebble Beach guys might get blown the fuck up tomorrow, which is basically what I was betting on. I went all in on not playing anybody that plays Pebble Beach Saturday and week long. And I do. My best lineup at least is in the $100 single entry. It is a 6 of 6 as of now. It does have Kitayama, so that one's pretty live. We'll have to see, but we'll check in on that again tomorrow. I just don't see how you can play a lot of lineups and not want to know how they're doing here at Cut Sweats. You can see it tells me my most important people to sweat tomorrow, Davis Riley, Taylor Kim, SH Kim. Wait, Taylor Moore, SH Kim. All right, there you go. You tell the big guy's been drinking. Make sure to hang around till the end. I'm going to do some prize picks. Prize picks fucking smash today. Lazy motherfuckers putting out stupid lions on the on the studs on Monterey Peninsula. And uh, I, I think that there's a big edge to be had tomorrow. So if you're one of those prop bet guys, hang around till the end of the video. I'll touch on those at the end, okay? I have not forgot about you. I am playing prize picks, and we are winning. It's very simple. All the stuff I use for DFS, we turn around and use for prize picks. Same logic. You motherfucker. All right, let's talk about contest selection as always. Look at them. Look at you, DraftKings. It just it gets me emotional to see him putting such good contests out there. Uh, $200,000 for round three, right? $50,000 up top. That's awesome. Only, I mean, yeah, I, I get it. It's 25%. I don't want it to be 25%, but let's face it. That's as good as it's probably going to get. So you just got to kind of take it. Uh, you know, ninth place, I guess, is 150th. Not the best, but if you're going to go play it, you know, it's better than it normally is. If you got a big bankroll, I think you'd be way better tossing in the 555, which last I looked, two of the people over on my Discord are currently setting first and second in that mother father. So I'll be sweating that with them tonight. Just like yesterday, I think this $5 uh, is the best MME out there, only 16% to first. Great contest. I always love the $44. My $10 18 max, always the nuts. Uh, and then from there, you always get your $1.20 max, stuff like that, right? Hopefully this, yeah, it's not winner take all again. That shit was stupid. $33 single entry. Uh, you know, you got all your good tournaments on here you normally have, right? No matter what you want to play, the key is, is to get in contest in which you are max entering, right? So if it's a 20 max, well, make sure you want to play $20 in the $1.20 max, right? If it's a, if it's a $150 three max, well, you might as well go in or all three of them. So it's going to cost you 450 bucks, right? I'm a real big believer in that. I will say on the 20, I highly doubt you want to enter $3,000 in lineups, right? All right, let's talk a little bit about how the courses have played so far today. The rounds are nearly over. You can see we still got some people out there like on 14, 15, stuff like that. So maybe about an hour of the round left. But you know what? I got shit I want to do on a Friday night, so I'm going to do this video now. You're going to fucking like it, okay? So uh, the, the, the big thing to take away from today is I told everybody over on my Discord, look at me. You look me in the eye. You go play everybody on Monterey Peninsula because Pebble Beach is going to have some wind today. They, it, is, it, it is a harder course because there's going to be more slapdicks playing it today. And uh, but this, is, this is a quote. 
I promise you that Monterey Peninsula will play at least a shot easier than either of the other two courses. And if you don't know what a full shot is, over 50, what is it, 52 players on every wave? Well, you're a dumb shit and you don't understand math. Monterey Peninsula played 1.2 under par today. Pebble Beach played 0.72 over. That's almost two full strokes. Do you understand what two full strokes is? My God, man. And then uh, Spyglass Hill played 1.03 over, which is no surprise. That is the hardest of the courses. So it was a full two and a quarter shots easier over there, right? And I saw some people today, uh, for what the fuck ever reason, Justin Rose was like 5 to 10% owned in Showdown today. And like all I can say about this, I, I, I got at least three DMs today being like, why did people play Justin Rose in Showdown? And the answer is simple. They're fucking donkeys. That's, that's the whole answer, right? Okay. If I, I hate to always use poker analogies, but you have to understand this, right? Have you ever like went all in and it's like it's a five bet? It's clear you have aces, and the guy's like, "Well, I have Jack Nine. I got a call. I have a feeling." And then they get there, right? Justin Rose had a hole in one today. I had a feeling he was going to get a hole in one. You had a feeling that Justin Rose was going to be on the hardest course and was going to be a nuts play. Well, then you're a fucking slap dick, and that's why you always lose at DraftKings. When people like that beat you, you can't overreact. You need to be thankful that those people exist because that's why we can have an edge at cash. That's why we can win an occasional GPP because you have dumbasses like that who go play guys at Spyglass Hill. Definitely the hardest course today because they have a feeling. Okay, you want to be thankful for those guys. I know it's tilting in the moment, but in the long run, these people are what allow us to be able to be break even or hopefully profitable players in the long run. So don't tilt when dumbasses go play Justin Rose and Showdown today, okay? Just be thankful that you got all your guys from Monterey Peninsula, like I told you to play, right? I mean, significantly easier, two full strokes easier than either course. What are we doing? What are we doing? So don't tilt about this stuff. Be thankful and know that they're going to fuck up again tomorrow, and tomorrow they won't have a shamrock shoved up their ass, and that is when you can get them, okay? Let's get to what we got to check. The most important thing, it is weather. I First of all, I'll go to windy.com because I don't like to brag, but I did pay the 18 bucks for the yearly subscription. Don't say I don't do anything for you, you mother fathers. I, you know, I don't want to brag. Am I rich? Maybe, maybe not. So tomorrow, it seems very, very clear that around 10 or 11 a.m., these winds are going to pick up. And by the mid-afternoon, I'm seeing fucking, I call that just straight-ass breezy is what I would call that, right? I mean, we're talking gusts up into the 20s. And if you don't know, of these three courses, please hear me on this if you hear nothing else. Of these three courses, the one that is definitely affected the most by wind is Pebble Beach. And the one that is definitely affected the least is Spyglass Hill. Now, I hope that you did not just hear me say, go play guys at Spyglass Hill. I did not say that. I said it is the least affected. It's still hard as balls when the, when the wind blows, but it's all hard as balls even when the wind doesn't blow. It doesn't sit on the coast. It sits inland a little bit here, right? But Pebble Beach gets abused by the wind. And yes, Monterey Peninsula, which sits right up here, gets harder too. But it basically, it, it goes from like easy to average, whereas Pebble Beach goes from easy to difficult. You cannot be playing that. But we are adults here. We're going to check and make sure that we're not just getting this all from one site. As you can see, you go over here to WindFinder, and they are saying, <gasps> Windy AF. Let's go over here to, uh, what is this? Uh, Willy Weather. Hey, t hey, hey, it's beautiful, beautiful. One o'clock. Th th the apocalypse at one o'clock. I don't know what's happening tomorrow at one o'clock. And let's go to the Weather Channel. My, uh, I, I won't lie. My grandma did tell me in her dying words last night, the Weather Channel does do weather. And tomorrow at uh, like one o'clock, just whatever, for whatever reason, the wind just magically starts blowing. This seems to be consistent across all four sites, one of which I pay for. I'm not here to brag. <laughs> I'm not here to brag, but I have $18 a year. And so because of that, I think we can really draw some big conclusions on what we need to know tomorrow, that this wind is going to be blowing based on what we were seeing on these projections. On um, week long, I went all in on this. Anybody that played Pebble Beach on Saturday, I went all in hoping that these winds were going to live up to what might have been promised, right? And because of that, uh, hopefully this comes to fruition tomorrow. And all the guys that play Pebble Beach get blown the fuck off this planet because I want them to shoot terrible tomorrow because I don't have any of them in my week long. Now, I know you're saying, hey, dude, but guy with the hat that says Showdown Hoedown, this is the Showdown Hoedown. Shouldn't you be talking about Showdown? You're right. And because of that, I think that you really don't want to play guys from Pebble Beach tomorrow, which is going to be hard because the vast majority of all the players are on, the good players are on Pebble Beach tomorrow. That's Spieth. That's Hovland. That's Fitzpatrick. That's, uh, you know, who else is up there? That's Kucher, Seamus Power, Dietrich. Almost, I would. I, I think it's something like like uh, eight of the top ten guys are going to be on Pebble Beach tomorrow, salary wise, right? So you're going to have to get creative with how you use your salary. 
And so if you're not going to be playing guys from Pebble Beach, well, when do you play them? And if you are going to play guys from Pebble Beach, when do you play them? I think the only answer, if you want to, if you insist on playing guys from Pebble Beach tomorrow, you've got to play them from the early wave. The earliest they go out, the better. But honestly, I don't think I'm going to be playing any of them, you mother father. All right. I have to make my lineups tonight. How am I going to do it? Well, I'm going to go load in some badass projections right over here. I'm also going to go uh, upload some uh, ownership, and then I'm going to go uh, make projections using the best optimizer out there called the Solver, because it doesn't matter how good your player pool is if you're not taking that player pool and making the most optimized lineup. And that's what this does, right? They're right here at the Solver. And if you don't know, optimizers, if you're making more than 20 lineups a week, I don't get how you do it, especially if you're playing multiple slates like Showdown and Week Long. You can see they have a laughable $25 a month for such an incredible optimizer. I highly encourage you to use it. It's right here. Make sure to use my landing page. It is in the description. If you don't see that little showdown hoedown symbol right up there, you ain't going to get the, you are not going to get my projections, which I don't know if my projections are the best in the industry, but I'll make them the best in the industry, just like I did ownership. All right. Course rotation. If you don't know, I, if you, I think tomorrow you probably want to play guys from Monterey Peninsula. And yes, I know I'm not like fucking lighting the world on fire with some hot take by saying that, right? I get it. But I will tell you this. The group playing Monterey Peninsula tomorrow is slap dicks. And if there's one thing I know about the psychology of DFS players is those slap dicks like to spend their money on big names that they know. And all the big names that you know are going to be playing Pebble Beach tomorrow, right? They all played Monterey Peninsula today. Once again, that's Matthew Fitzpatrick. That's Jordan. That's, uh, that's, that's Magic Beans uh, Spieth. That is Hovland. That is Seamus Power. It is Maverick McNeely. It's all those guys are going to be on Pebble Beach tomorrow. So then who is going to be on Monterey Peninsula tomorrow? Well, it's going to be all the guys that played Spyglass Hill today, right? So we'll look at that in just a minute. So if you see guys that did well on Spyglass Hill today, or you think they're a good bounce back candidate, just know that they're going from playing definitely the hardest course today to definitely the easiest course tomorrow and not to overreact. Because if you're one of those people that overreact, well, let's just go look at how people did today. Who shot the best out there today? Uh, well, I mean, right there, Seamus Power, right? Just trying to, pff, incredible, minus seven. Way to go, Seamus, you mother father. But Joel Dahman, he sucks. He could never do good. Or he could. Brandon Wu played, her uh, didn't play that good the first day. He played pretty good today. Peter Malnati, all these guys, uh, wh 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 where'd Kisner go? Kisner's probably around here somewhere, right? All these guys that were on Monterey Peninsula today were the plays, okay? Just embrace that they're going to be on an easier course, and when good golfers and when good golfers are on easier courses, they score better. It's pretty fucking simple to understand. Hey, I notice a trend here. Monterey Peninsula, Monterey Peninsula, Monterey Peninsula, Monterey Peninsula, Monterey Peninsula, Monterey Peninsula. Notice how every good score comes from there. And if somebody wins, I haven't even looked, but let's say somebody wins the big twenty dollar GPP today, and they played somebody from Robbie Shel uh, played Robbie Shelton in their lineup, and they're like, "See, you had to play Robbie Shelton to win the GPP." No dipshit you didn't if you played robbie shelton and you won the gpp you won in spite of yourself okay you're a moron who makes very negative ev tournaments and you get there right it's the same people that play the lottery if you play the lottery and think you have a skill you're a dumbass they're just random numbers coming out of a ball and don't don't go quote that that old couple that brian cranston movie i i'm not talking about that i'm talking about the big jackpot okay so you should have played all Monterey Peninsula guys today without exception, okay? With the, the, it, it, it is proven right here, right? We can see right here that you should have played it. So here's where we get into a problem. If you want to go look at stats, you're not going to find them, right? Because, yes, we you're going to say, hey, I see stats right there, man. You're sorting bottom right now. Okay, first of all, quit talking like that. Second of all, these stats, we if, if you haven't played Pebble Beach yet, we have no stats for you, right? So if you go over here and you go look at uh, uh, Scott Stallings, he has yet to play Pebble Beach, so he has no stats. Same thing with Brandon Wu, Keith Mitchell. So we don't really know how they're playing. We don't know if they're getting it done with their putter, if they're getting it done with their driver, if they're getting it done on approach. We don't know. So because of that, I don't really think you want to be playing tons of stat-based guys. What I think you really want to do is I think you want to be playing the wind. And tomorrow, you want to be playing guys that are playing Monterey Peninsula. Once again, going back and looking at our little image, the guys that are playing Monterey Peninsula for the third round. See how it says third Monterey Peninsula? That means they played Spyglass. So I'm going to go back over here. Who are some guys that are playing Spyglass today? Like Scott Stallings, if you don't know, will be the mega chalk tomorrow. The mega chalk. He, will he might be the highest owned guy tomorrow, and I'm not even being dramatic. Kevin Yu, Sadoshi Kudaira. 
Uh, Richie Rowinski, Justin Rose, which, by the way, if, if you played Justin Rose Day and got a hole-in-one and you did well on a GPP, congratulations, you're a dumbass. Okay, there you go. I said it. If, you, if that offends you, click off. I don't care. That was a really stupid play to play him. Okay, it was. It was he was on the hardest course, and he, he, he played incredible. Well, I had a feeling. Okay, you keep having your feelings, bro. Uh, all right, moving on. Uh, other guys that played Spyglass today that could be really appealing tomorrow. Kyle Westmoreland, Vietnam. Uh, Russell Knox. Uh, old Hollywood, or no, Cheesesteak Hoagie. I got to get my own damn nicknames right. Uh, Sean O'Hare. Okay. Uh, Sung Kang, Chad Ramey, Robbie Shelton. Oh, he'll be mega chalk. Coming off a good round, going to the easy course tomorrow. Robbie Shelton, Scott Stallings are both going to be guys over 25% of tomorrow. L-O-L. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here with that stupid shit. Uh, Nick Watney, Paul Haley, Matthew Neesmith. He'll be very popular tomorrow. These are the kind of guys you want to target. Within that, I also want to look at Spyglass Hill guys, uh, guys that played Spyglass Hill today and maybe played average. Because if the course, if you don't, if you didn't see, Spyglass played a full, full stroke over par today, right? And so if you shot even today, that was actually a really good round. And even if you shot one over on Spyglass Hill, you, you just shot average. So I am looking for guys that kind of just played average over on Spyglass Hill today. That is that is essentially the root of my strategy. Furthermore, if you want to take it a bit further, give me the guys going out on Spyglass that are out there the absolute earliest. Because if at least if you're out there the earliest, it looks like you might get about a nine in before these fucking brutal winds kick in, right? The later you go out, the tougher it's going to be. You're going to have better greens in the morning. You're going to have softer conditions, and you're going to have the least amount of winds. So guys going off tomorrow morning, that's where I'm at. That's what I'm going to be playing. Who's that going to be? I don't give picks here, new guy. Go figure out your own picks. So that is the strategy tomorrow. I'm not looking at a single stat. I'm simply playing the game just like I did today. Played all Monterey Peninsula guys. It worked out very well for me. I played guys that went off very late today to avoid that win. They have had the best conditions. Rather I win, rather I lose, it doesn't matter. I'm not results oriented. I am process oriented. And I know that I made the right process to put myself in the best plus EV play. And if you don't understand that, you're a dipshit. You'll never win at DraftKings, okay? Same, probably the same people that always lose at poker. All right, uh, before I show you some guys that have great round three scoring and show you my prize picks, please go like and share. If you don't know, the big guy right here is Independent AF. No media network, no sponsors. I'm just a dude in front of a camera talking shit. When you like and you subscribe and you share this around, it helps me. I greatly appreciate you. Or what you could really do is come over and check out my website, dgen75.com, growing like a fucking weed every day. It's the best community out there. I don't give you a single pick. I teach you how to play. But most importantly, I have the best tool out there that we are always refining called the Rosetta Stone. As you can see, this tells you everything you need to know to make the best informed decisions. Am I going to do one for tomorrow round three? No, because we don't have all the data to do it, but you bet your right testicle that there's going to be one out for round four and round three and round four moving forward. I also do one of these for a week long only for my members over on my website. Go check it out. Feel free to always reach out to me on Twitter. I am not one of those guys that takes myself too serious. If you reach out to me and send me a, a message, I will always get back to you in a timely and thoughtful manner. All right, those top four guys, here are four really bargain value, really good round three scores that aren't very expensive tomorrow and are guys you wouldn't think of. Once again, I would check what course they play, but I just went and clicked their names. Taylor Moore, Scott Stallings, ah, the Chuck's going to get there. Nate Lashley and Aaron Baddeley. All right, let's end on price picks. Today, I told everybody that would listen, please go play all of these studs over at Monterey Peninsula. Price picks put up the laziest number. I mean, you basically just needed Kevin Kisner to shoot even par to get to cover, and he's like three under. You just needed Joel Nauman to shoot one under. He's like five under. Hovland was like a one under. He shot a four under. Literally, I think I, 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 I did six bets today, and I think I would have went five for five on every single one of them if Matthew Fitzpatrick didn't finish bogey double bogey. Okay, even with that, I think I'm still going to have tons of four or fives, right? So here is the edge at, pri at, at price picks tomorrow. You look at the lines when they come out. They will be out this evening, and you attack. The good news is, is most of the people you can bet are going to be on Pebble Beach tomorrow. I would be targeting overs on strokes 
on strokes tomorrow because there's going to be a lot of nasty numbers on there at Pebble Beach. If they are going off late, they are going to probably play 9 to 12 holes and brutal, brutal winds, and Pebble Beach has a little bit of bite when those winds kick up off the coast. So because of that, they probably lost their ass today setting out lazy lines. I think tomorrow, if I see Pebble Beach at like, you know, a, a, a 70 or a 70.5 for Speeth or Hovland or Fitz or Dietrich or any of those guys, give me the over because that course is going to play like a bear tomorrow, and I think you're going to see a full one and a half to two strokes over par tomorrow. So even if they play two strokes ahead of everybody, that's only an even par round. So I will be attacking the overs on strokes and I will be attacking it hard, just like I did today with the unders on strokes and the overs on birdies over on Monterey Peninsula for all those studs. That is the answer. That is how you do it. Take your emotions out of it and just simply look at how's the course going to play. And Pebble Beach is the most affected of these three courses by the wind and they are going to blow tomorrow afternoon. So if I see Spieth going out, you know, one of the later groups tomorrow, I haven't even looked. If you want me to be honest, I will be betting the over on his strokes. Okay. And I, I don't know if I'm going to mess with the birdies, but I know I'll do the over on the strokes because he still might roll in six birdies, but he might have eight bogeys. Okay. That is it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you come check out my show, uh, the live stream every Wednesday. Be back tomorrow for round four where there is way bigger edge because people love to chase imaginary fake points because they're donkey dicks. It has been real. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your time. Shoot those screenshots at me. Reach out to me. And in the meantime, just enjoy this outro. Outro.